Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to my fifth game in the DBBL qualifier, World Cup qualifier. I started with a blitz. Um, I was playing Baki, who is the second rated, second highest rated record in in Cabal Vision, like win rate. So he's obviously he knows how to play. Um, he had set up quite well against the blitz here. Um, there was, you know, it wasn't easy for me to get through. Probably three, three, two was my easiest or something. I could have gone around the long way, but um, so you know, he'd, he'd done a he'd done a decent setup stopping the stopping the blitz, especially with it being deep. I mean, if it had been the side, I could have put a lot of pressure on. But I mean, it wasn't a game breaking blitz like it sometimes is. Um, he had two dodge blitzers, a block and a wrestle witch, and a leader um, runner is his five skills. Standard NAF rules basically. Um, I went leader, strip tackle, two dodge. So yeah, it's a it's a tabletop classic read. I mean, the leader on the runner is sometimes dodge on a blitzer, but apart from that, it's pretty standard. Um, so yeah, obviously it was lucky getting the blitz, but not it wasn't too crazy. He, he hadn't exposed the uh, witch or anything, and he and he hadn't uh, he'd, he'd set up against a blitz somewhat. I did the. Uh, I did the blitz there into into a three dice from the tree in case it was a push. That was that was the rationale there. But yeah, so so much like when uh, Yagul got his blitz against me, because because we'd, he'd set up, uh, you know, there wasn't it wasn't a crazy, it wasn't a crazy thing. Got the tree into a couple of people. I mean, that was a good start getting the tree into two guys, obviously. <laughs> Thanks, Tetra fourteen twelve. Right, so yeah, so obviously he's not the start he would have wanted because he's not getting to hit this guy in the trees there, but he's a little bit on the back foot, but nowhere near as devastating as it could have been with a short kick or if he'd had a different team or whatever. And yeah, obviously we're, we're, in, we're in chase cam here where whoever received um, gets the camera behind them for the drive. Which is good because it does give me a bit of a different take on it as well for myself. So he's going very safe here, anti leap cage. Though I could have left him this way. Um, so it's not, you know, it's not really stopping me leaping in. Is this the one who fails the dodge? Yeah. So this Blitz have failed the dodge. Do you know what? I could have tried to get the ball here, couldn't I? That was actually a really good chance to leap into a one dice with a pretty good recovery, actually. Do you know what? I probably, why didn't I go for the ball here? Strips right there. One, two. One, two, three. Leap, hit, strip it there. I probably should have gone straight for the ball here. I think looking back, looking at it from this direction, it looks like I clearly should have just gone for the ball. There was a player down, three about the three dice, plenty to, plenty for recovery. So I probably I probably should have gone for the for the strip there. That was a, that was actually a really good chance to you know because he'd done it wrong basically. He should have been at the back there rather than at the side. The side wasn't doing anything. Three squares, four, five, six. Bring one of these guys around. Yeah, I probably should have gone straight for the strip. Turn one. But uh, tree rooted turn one, which is a bit unlucky, wasn't it? But I, th I, was, I guess I was trying to wait for a better chance. But that was actually a really good chance when you think about it. Half of the well, okay, three of the squares were good for me. And then the, I guess I was maybe it was the dump off because I, oh, he was he could dump off to the witch. The witch would he would pass it on a three, and the witch would catch it on a two, wouldn't he? And maybe that's what I was thinking. I couldn't stop the witch. Do you know what? I th now that <laughs> this is a great replay analysis, what I was probably thinking of was the dump off. I couldn't, I couldn't get a tackle zone on the witch to make it either. That's probably what I was thinking, and that's why I didn't go for that. Yeah, because I couldn't. Yeah, I was aware when I was playing the game. I was aware of the dump off, and I was thinking I didn't want to. I didn't want to give him a two plus catch from the dump off. But even then, it could have been worth a shot. It'd been risky though, wouldn't it? Going all men's contact from turn one. Maybe I shouldn't have. Uh, so maybe, maybe it was right not to go for it, but maybe I should have gone for it. Now one, two, three, four, five, 
six seven I could again see now I couldn't really hit from this angle because uh, because I would have to dodge through here to, to base everybody so I was happy not going for the hit on the ball this turn I try to tag these guys to cause a bit of problems dodge there so we can only one dice one in three and knock him over rookie on there I'll try to get in his way a little bit Basically a half man's, you know, basing these guys who don't have blocks much better than basing the ones that do have block. But I thought, you know, I've got a bit of an advantage. I could try and push it, you know, hopefully he'll push down the side here and get into troubles. Or he'll come back to the middle and make the tree relevant. You know, if I can get him to hit without block or dodge without dodge, it's good, isn't it? So obviously, yeah, he was very really unlucky to fail that dodge and get knocked out. So I mean, the, while the blitz wasn't effective, it did lead to a KO blitzer. <laughs> so it turned out that the blitz was pretty, pretty important. Um, and you know what? Looking back on here, oh no, I, I couldn't get someone in here. I could have done a three plus dodge with a reroll with a with a dodge guy to get in here and I could have pushed him to there and then chained him in for a one dice on the ball. But I didn't. I I was gonna go for the sack here, so so let, let let's look at this. I was gonna go for the sack here because I thought I can uh I can base these two. He's already basing these. So everyone's gonna be a three plus catch. I've got this guy to run away and score. Um like potentially score if he if he doesn't use you know, if I don't use any rerolls, I could GFI away to score. So I'm go I want to go in for the ball sack this turn. But maybe what I should have done was, yeah, as I said, use a dodge guy in there, push him to here, and then push him to there, and then get the one dice and the ball that way. And I could have made this three dice, three, four, five, six. I could have made it three dice, brought in the catcher. But again, I wanted to base people up and, and make the ball sack. So I make a two dice block instead of a three dice block. Get the boat down. Use the reroll. So now, without a reroll, there's no way. There's no way I want to leap in. Um, you know, I don't. I don't want to leap in and one dice the ball without a reroll. So, so that was. And then, I, and then, because then I had to use block and roll another one in nine. So that was a failed sack attempt. Even though it didn't look like it, that was actually a failed sack attempt. Um, with failing that one in nine. But yeah, maybe I should have. Maybe I should have used somebody to make it a three dice. So. But I was pretty sad to not. You know, I, I thought that was an okay shot at the ball that turn. I don't know where, maybe I would have leaped this way and pushed there, but the recovery wasn't as good as it was on turn one. But again, I could have tagged everybody so they'd have been on three, three plus catches and had a scoring threat. That was my sneaky scoring threat. I, I put him so he was just basing that guy, but actually he was in scoring range, wasn't he, with sprint. So I liked that I had the sneaky scoring threat. And I mean, it came out of it okay for a for a failed sack attempt. Powers me dodger. Moving up the side there. I mean, I did leave this hole in the defense, I guess. But maybe I shouldn't have shut down that side so far. Maybe I should have had a guy back here screening with a tree. Three plus dodge, so he can't really complain about failing that. Even though it was a one. And here it looks now. Here it looks like there's a good chance for a sack as well, doesn't it? Um, There's a few ways I can go around the side there, get an assist on, make it two dice. Um, just a four plus dodge in is quite reasonable. So there's a, there's a good chance of a sack here. Um, you know, this loose-ish loose, loose -ish screen. Um, that, that made the recovery hard. So at first I was thinking, you know, at first I was thinking I could go for a sack and then I thought it just wasn't worth it because this actually is, although it's loose-ish, it isn't loose enough, so uh, 
so I didn't go for it. I, th I started setting up to go for the for the sack, and then I think I changed my mind and didn't go for it. Let's let's see. So yeah, put these two so that um, you know, and, and I'm thinking I'm going to go for the sack here. I'm, I'm fully intending to go for the sack, and then I just realised. I had no recovery. He's still got three rerolls, so getting the ball on the ground isn't that good. And then I just, I just chickened out really, and just didn't go for it. <laughs> so that was weird, wasn't it? <laughs> so I just essentially, essentially gave him an easy sack here if he wanted it of uh you know push push and then out but then you know I, to be fair I, I realized as as the uh as the turn went on i realized actually he's in a, he's in a pretty tricky spot here with all these guys based you know as, as it went on i thought i can get tackle on the witch here actually thought i could blitz the witch on two dice and then i realized i couldn't so if if i could have taken that turn back he would have stood there and i would have blitzed the witch instead of that instead of this guy but still halfway through the turn I realized he was still going to be in, in a quite a bit of trouble actually so I thought maybe it's better to go for it next turn so he doesn't go he doesn't go for the surf there he could have done but he, he chose the board down almost as if winning is more important than getting a surf off <laughs> <laughs> He's been really unlucky on his dodges, hasn't he? Um, well, there you go. So that's his first reroll gone though, on turn five. And and now it was scary because that was two plus without a reroll. This is two plus without a reroll. And if he fails any of these, he's in a lot of trouble. So I mean, so he's he's made three two pluses without a reroll. Um, and he had to make that one first because if he had done the block first, he couldn't have he couldn't have dodged through. So he had to do the dodge first. So so although he got unlucky failing the first dodge, he, he actually got lucky that he you know he made all the rolls without a reroll. So now I'm going for the sack this turn. I've got this and possibility of an assist there. I've let him get behind me a bit, which I shouldn't have done. I should have had somebody deeper. I think it's often really good to have somebody really deep so that they can't do this kind of thing where they screen off your whole team. You know, if you've got someone really deep. Then you can, you can get around here. But I am planning on going for a ball sack here. Let's see what happens. One in nine. Brilliant. So there's my reroll gone. Down to one reroll, and now I'm thinking, right, I have to save this reroll for my one turn attempt. Um, so I have, I have to, I have to take, I have to save this one reroll now. I can't reroll anything for the last four turns, last three turns, well, last two turns of defense. I can't reroll anything because I have to save this reroll. So I can't even try the sack again, or maybe I can try it without a reroll. Um, but yeah, that was. So I think without having a reroll, I I gave up on the sack and. Uh, and just blitzed a guy. So yeah, it was a, it was a little. I was a little bit sad because again, you know, I'd, I'd got everyone who was going to pass it to based, so they would be catching on a three plus, or a four plus, a bouncing ball. So I'd I'd, I'd set it all up to 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 go for the sack, but then yeah, denied by a one in nine, and by not being able to reroll anything for the rest of the half. Well, the the next two turns. But you know, it got in his way a bit, so it wasn't it wasn't a terrible turn. Doing some chaining things here. Hmm. Not super relevant.
So yeah, that's not a great defensive formation for him, is it? Like, it's okay, but... How he finally uses a reroll. It's like here, I can hit the witch with tackle, blitz him down, or blitz him down, and and uh, you know do quite a good do quite a good job of stopping him getting forward here, because I've actually got people in front again. So I think it's right not to go for the sack this turn. Though it looks like I go for the sack anyway without a reroll. Oh, it is a four plus dodge in. Maybe that was in my mind. It's a four plus. So I think I declared the blitz. And then made the dodge. So if I'd used dodge, I was just going to hit this guy. But because I still had dodge, I went for the 75% dodge in, which then failed. But I think maybe, maybe I shouldn't have gone for the sack that turn. Looking back, I mean, he's got jump up. Well, she's got jump up. So I, I could have knocked him down and tried to stall him out at this point. But didn't. He finally gets a removal. Yeah, he's going to surf that guy. That was, maybe I shouldn't have put him in such a surfable position, but I did just want to stand in the way and, you know, potentially sack the ball as well. Again, he's got a he's got a cage, and I can always go for the leap in one dice on the last turn. Strips quite close. Another another two plus dodge fail, but I mean he's not re-rolling them. Is he only only one with well a few were crucial and he did he he used a re-roll. On the turn where it was crucial, and then pass the next three without a reroll, and it was crucial. Um, so, you know, looking here, I've got I've got half a chance. These two guys can get in front, and he can go there, and I can I can get the strip hit on the ball. So, that was that was I was sad about this dodge here because he was obviously my my main guy, my go to guy to score was this one because he was here and he had dodge, so he could have just done one. But this guy is faster than this one, so this is this is okay. So this became the guy who was going to break away and score potentially, and then the first block, double skull, and I instinctively re-rolled it, which was terrible play, because I should have kept the re-roll for overtime. I probably should have done that first block first before standing him up as well. Um, but there you go, All right? So anyway, going for the sack now without a re-roll. Get the leap in, get the one dicer. He fumbles the dump off, goes to the witch, and she catches it on a four plus. Brilliant. So we've had <laughs> we've had two sacks not attempted from dice. One one sack failed with a dodge, and then one sack um, failed by the by essentially sca catching the scattered ball. Um, so yeah, it wasn't a great half for ball sacking, but I shouldn't have even tried. I shouldn't have rerolled that out. Instant regret as soon as I re-rolled that. And, uh, yeah, that was bad. Also, I should have set dodge to optional here um, to stop myself getting surfed, this dancer getting surfed. Because I used dodge automatically there. So I should have had it, I should have set it um, to manual. So I can see why some people do have it set to manual all the time. Well, now this made it a little bit, a tiny bit scary for him, not having a re-roll on the last turn after that. But luckily, luckily the dancer was unharmed. And so was the line -offs. I mean, two surfs and no injuries was pretty lucky. So yeah, two dice is him. And then three dice is him. Though this was actually the wrong play, because that's a 1 in 27 chance of failure. Though he's got the upside of maybe casting the, the catcher, I think going for a 1 in 27 chance of failure over 1 in 36, I think he should have just dodged. Um, you know, the, obviously there's more upside to the catcher block, because he might kill the catcher. Also, if it fails, 
Um, on the one in twenty seven, there's a chance of still knocking over the catcher. Whereas, and he'd rather take an armor roll and a lino than a well, a runner than a witch elf. But still, I think I would have just gone for the one in thirty six dodge there. But you know, good drive from him. I mean, he didn't really do anything wrong, did he at all? As you would expect from somebody with a seventy eight percent win rate in champs ladder. Um, he didn't do anything wrong. There were there were some spots where maybe I could have had a better chance of sacking than other turns, but I chickened out one time and the other times that. But I mean, I think I, I think I was right not to go for the second turn one because the the witch elf had the two plus catch, uh, and then yeah, it was either I chickened out or uh, or the dice didn't cooperate. So I felt a little a touch unlucky in that half in terms of just getting the ball. But attrition wise it went okay. Um, well very well actually with this blitzer getting KO'd straight away. So now without a reroll for the one turn I was I was sick. I mean he he did this setup which meant I had to use the whole method. Um blitz this guy into the hole, then block him. And I, I could have maybe put someone in here and chained for I could have put the catcher here and then two more here and chained him to there, maybe I was thinking that might have been better. But I was just going to block there, then there, and then go for like 4 plus 3 plus so. 1. Was the plan. I just couldn't, I couldn't be bothered to work out how to put the catcher in the other, in the other spot. But then, how lucky can you get? Riot. The most annoying result in the game sometimes. You play a perfect 8 turn stall like Baki did, and then the other guy gets a 2 turn chance. And then combined with a riot, touchback. So without rerolls to get a riot and a touchback, that was just an absolute dream, wasn't it? Unbelievable. Unbelievable look there. So all of my previous, uh, you know... <laughs> it was horrible I had to make this dodge first. But um, he was in the way of the dancers, so I had to. But yeah, after 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 I think getting a little a touch unlucky not getting the not getting the chances of the ball sack or the ball sack not working. I know I'm saying ball sack a lot. But um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I thought all the times it didn't work, I was I, I felt a little touch unlucky, but I mean that was a that was an unbelievable gift, the uh, the riot. Riot and touchback is outrageous. So obviously the wrestle the wrestle witch elf is the one that I'm most most concerned about um which is why these are here rather than oh lucky cars um which is why these are here rather than out here because i don't care if he can hit me with somebody who hasn't got wrestle basically his wrestle is the only is the one that he wants to hit with isn't it so I think that's the first the first dodge failure that I've made, pretty much. But I mean, it, it, it would have been nice to get him to there, but it wasn't essential. He was going one at a time here without a reroll. So he was thinking that he wasn't stacking them. But I mean, I'm lucky that he doesn't have a reroll, so he could easily get two dice and not do anything. Kind of irrelevant moves there, because the only thing that matters is going for the sack. And he fails the 3 plus dodge and gets KO'd. So that was pretty lucky. That was pretty pretty lucky by me. Um, yeah, so I thought about this for a while and I realised the best thing was just to dodge away. Got 1 in 36 chance of failure. I was thinking about three, you know, dodging the dancer away and 3 dicing this guy, but... At the end of the day, that would have just added another chance to fail, so I didn't think it was worth it. So I just went for the strictly best odds of just dodging. And, uh, yeah, make it 1-1, just thanks to the horrific look of the touchback and the riot and the cars. His chaos did come back, though, and mine came back. But, I mean, that, you know, that's what you... That, that's what happens with the tree sometimes, isn't it? The tree, the tree does punch things and sometimes causes things. So, uh, but yeah, that was a, that was a disgusting turn for Baki. 
you know, you would forgiving him. You would forgive him for being a little bit tilted after that turn. But he's still got ten guys against eleven. It's not, it's not that bad for him. Um, but you know, he's he he basically, he didn't have yeah yeah he was he was on three wins and a draw and I was on four wins so he basically had to win this game. So I was expecting him to go for like you know, speculative sacks with his wrestle witch elf, but um nothing you know. I had to be mindful of that in my drive, but he hasn't really got the the sacking tools that the uh, Woodies have, has he? So I was feeling pretty good, obviously. I mean, I might have scored the one turn without the riot and without the touchback, but <laughs> and without the cars, but still, it was still very lucky, obviously, to make it a lot easier. So yeah, I was going to do this and just not have anybody back to collect it. And then I realized I could spare a guy. So again, this is just to kind of protect against Blitz as much as I could. He hopefully not going to be an issue. I think I would have had to reroll a 1 in 36 here. And even a bolt down would have been a bit grim. Not moving a lot. I mean, I, I, that's the thing. Be, because I'm thinking he's got to win, I don't want to push too hard for the win myself. Because, I mean, I wouldn't have minded a draw here. You know, he's obviously a very good coach. So I'm okay getting the draw. So I don't want to push too far forward and make it too easy for him to get, to get hit on the ball. That's my main, my main concern is because he's going to have to try to get hit on the ball. I'm going to push everyone in the tree, which is quite good. But also, the tree is is got some guys protecting him, so he can only get three on him. So he can't really, he can't really do anything to the tree. I don't like just standing the tree in the middle of guys, you know, where he could have get taken out. So he's going a bit hub dirt base 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 here, which is fair enough. He's he's got to make something happen, so. Nice blitz. Interesting. I think he was if he was get a power to dodge through maybe to get a threat, maybe that's what he was thinking. So yeah, I had the option here to block here and then get a few guys. Maybe I should have maybe I should have blocked and followed with a tree. Um also had the option of just not activating the tree and keeping a guy on him. Dodge away from all these guys with a screen already made. So, yeah, I, put, I pushed him into there, so maybe I didn't even activate the tree. I think that would have been the best play to not even activate the tree. Because a 1 in 9 there is pretty bad, isn't it? I should move him to here. Uh, on the other side. Same difference. Maybe he should have gone there. But I did make with block and didn't follow. And now, if I'd followed, I would have had the, the, the tree on a lot of players. He'd have been on four players instead of one. He's got dodge. And he would have also sandwiched him. So the, the, the follow was really tempting. But I thought he was just, you know, I didn't know I was going to break his armor. And then he would have had three guys on him. And he would have easily got two dice on the tree. Probably knocked him down. And then, you know, I, I just didn't want the tree to be knocked over, basically. But you could say that maybe I should have, should have gone for that. I don't know. Having the ball on the same side as both witches is probably a bit stupid as well, isn't it? <laughs> but 
face the ball. So yeah, I guess I should have tried to switch around to here somehow, shouldn't I? Um, is what I should have done to get away from the Witch Elves. But instead, I just tried to hit the Witch Elves. Um, because it's good to hit the Witch Elves, isn't it? He's got his wrestle one there, which is the one that I care the most about. So I thought the chance to hit him with tackle was pretty good. Only got a push. And maybe I should have dodged away there to, to shore up the cage, thinking about it. But I just wanted another 2D, but I guess I could have dodged away and then brought him across. But then, the next dice roll is a double one. So if I had tried to dodge him away, it would have been a disaster. So, well, it might have been a disaster. <laughs> I mean, you know, you don't know what the dice rolls are going to be. And just because they're in this order doesn't mean they'd be in that order. Plus I've done blocks. But, you know, you know what I mean. If I double one there, it would have been horrible. And double one in there was pretty bad because I could have had a screen there. But in he comes for the wrestle sack. So he gets the dodge in, he gets the one dice, and he gets the one in three result. So he's got a three out of four dodge in, and then a one in three hit. So in quite the opposite of all of my sack attempts, he he, he succeeds in his first one. But it was a it was a good. I mean that was the thing. I was in a big cage, so he kind of had to get lucky to get a good scatter really. But it wasn't a bad scatter at all. He's got a dodger there to try and pick it up. And he does make the 3 plus dodge. 4 plus uses dodge. Rerolls the 4 plus pickup. Now he doesn't have dodge for the 3 plus 2 plus, so he doesn't attempt it. But then that just makes it easy for me to hit him multiple times if I want. So, you know, I could have just I could have just uh, stood him up and two diced him and then hit him with tackle, but I thought let's just hit him with strip, make sure he make sure he loses the ball. And then I got a god tier scatter here. An absolute unbelievable scatter of not in a tackle zone. Uh, I was very happy about that. <laughs> and then just made a bunch of dodges with dodge to to make the cage safe. Dodge without dodge to two dice him. And then I realised once I'd done this, he he can chain my guy to chain my dancer out of the way to get a one dice on the ball, so I think I've got to dodge this guy now. Um and I use the reroll because he is leader, so I thought I don't want to roll a one, not reroll it, and he gets KO'd or something. So And then I hit him into this into this formation anyway. So maybe I could have just made that block first. But I didn't, I didn't like it. I would have rather powered him. But, you know, he's, he's in for another shot at the ball here. He's got jump up. He's got, you know, he's got players around. He's got chaining, up, chaining possibilities. He's got three plus here to get the push, hasn't he? Without block. Gets the ball down. So he's down to one reroll already. One reroll already. On defense, so I'm pretty happy about that. Not happy that my dance is going to get punched again, but it is with block, so it's only it is only a, a one in six to get the ball. But it's got two chances potentially. And this was a this is a nice move as well, getting another one dice from the uh, from the other blitzer after it. He rolls a skull, so I'm pretty, pretty lucky to survive that. Um, and now, of course, I've got a great, a great opportunity to get clear um, here on turn thirteen.
not much of a screen, but and you know I, I make a mistake here. I think it's fair to say I make a mistake by putting this guy here. He should, he just could have been here. I think I was thinking about the witch elf going one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, but realistically she's got blocks so she's not a, really a concern the concern is this witch elf which you know one two three four five six seven gfi gfi that wouldn't have made any difference actually let's see would it have made any difference if i was stood here she would go one two three four five six seven GFI, GFI, yep, yeah, so she wouldn't have been in range. So I should have counted the squares and GFI'd with a, with a ward answer probably on that turn. And I also probably should, either I could, I could have gone wide and GFI'd with a dancer. Well, no, I should have GFI'd with the dancer first. But yeah, there was no reason to go wide, really. It was, it was cutting down the angle of this witch elf coming in, but that, that was really quite irrelevant. So yeah, that was definite mistake. This should have been a, a tighter cage there. And I went for some rolls with this guy because I just didn't care because I'd used his leader reroll. But yeah, I should have counted the squares. That that was really bad, really bad mistake for me. I should have counted the squares from this bitch elf and either made the GFI. I mean, GFI would have been better, but I should have at least made the cage tighter. No reason to give him a four plus in instead of a five plus. Because again, he needs the win, he's always going to go for these. I mean, it was a good shot anyway, even if he didn't need to go for the win. What else is he going to do? Block some guys and run back. He did roll a 5 anyway, so it wouldn't have mattered. Okay. But yeah, I should have GFI'd. And he got, quite a, he got a great little scatter there. Any of these wouldn't have been so good. But he gets one right where he needed it. I'm like, oh god, he's just going to go and pick it up and score. I was absolutely gutted by that, to be honest. But then Tackle did a thing, rolls a 1, and then double 1, so he was horribly unlucky there, into a Kaz. So I mean, while while he's made the two sacks on the ball, and uh, failed a lesser, he failed a low chance sack with the uh, one the one dices with block, but the two wrestle sacks he's made, um, which was that, this one, this one, you know, was just one hit as well. Um, but I mean that was horribly unlucky for him. Absolutely horribly unlucky that he uh, <laughs> that they one into he could have easily just picked up the ball then. So I yeah, I really incredibly lucky to survive that one. I could have just GFI'd with a dancer. Making the tight cage wouldn't have made any difference with the way the dice went. Um it would have been better though, obviously. But yeah, I should have counted squares and just GFI'd with a dancer the turn before. Really, really poor to have not GFI'd, I think. But then other times I'll make that GFI and I'll one in thirty six it and feel feel sick. <laughs> I made a GFI there, which was actually just a bit of random GFI, but you know, I thought she's so fast, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven GFI, that anything because he's out of rerolls, if I make GFIs then then he's gotta make GFIs. That helps me because I've got a reroll, doesn't it? This block actually made it easier for him to get the Witch Elf somewhere, so I probably shouldn't have made that block. But I was just fishing for a pal, as you do. And then the dodge GFI to foul. I mean, I think I'm up, I'm, I would have been happy to get sent off there, you know. I just need to keep the Witch, uh, the Wrestle Witch under control, don't I? I really should have counted squares that turn before the, the the cage, the tight cage wouldn't have made wouldn't have made any difference with the where the dice went. It would obviously would lower the odds, but the GFI makes him gives him zero chance. And he had another chance for a one dice on the ball here, but <laughs> rolls a one gets KO'd. <laughs> He's rolled an awful lot of ones as Bucky here, um, and you know. <laughs> It's starting to turn turn into a dicing from his point of view, isn't it, at this point? The riot, and then plus all of this. He's rolled a lot of ones. Crucial crucial ones where his guys got removed as well. 
Not that the Kaz makes much difference now anyway. Like the KO on the Kaz don't make much difference. Stuns would have been just as brutal. Um, but the the key thing, the key thing was um, was I should have just counted the squares. And he did get lucky. To be fair, he got lucky on his on his on his sacks, making the uh, making the dodges in, and then the one dice, one in threes to get the ball. Whereas where, where, where my sacks would have been a two plus to get the ball. <laughs> so so he did roll well on his sacks, and I rolled poorly to not get the chance of a sack or you know the catch when I got the sack so so I was feeling unlucky um, about my sacking attempts but uh, this is just a shot to nothing I have the reroll bit greedy getting two assists instead of just doing one but these two blocked the path of her going to get the ball and um, I wanted these two I didn't want to get sent off see if I'd got sent off here here look I'll pause it if I, if I'd got if he had fouled and got sent off and not broken armor, she could have gone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, GFI, GFI. So it was imperative that these stood there, so she'd have to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, GFI, GFI. So while that looks like I was being stupid going through uh, dodging two GFIs to make the foul, that's why these two had to be here to stop her hitting the ball on uh, turn fifteen. Um <laughs> so yeah and he rolls another one <laughs> common theme here um, which lets me move the cage over here a bit more oh no, I scored 10 16 okay. I didn't know which turn it was so there you go, so just score obviously not going to make any rolls he's got a chance of a one turner uh, with movement 7 but obviously with all these cars, um, he hasn't got any chance of it. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, he's, he's really got no chance of a one turner with with seven pl six players in movement seven. Uh, he's just hoping for a riot. So I don't set up to try and stop the one turner. Just try to set up for a riot, um, which it's not much of a setup for a riot. But there you go. What can you do? I mean, even if he got the right, I've got the stripper there, haven't I? So, oh yeah, two of my guys went out to heat, and one of his. And maybe Baki knew that there was no cast difference. Uh, it turns out I actually read the rules after this and found out there's no cast difference as a tiebreaker, so he just ended the turn. And yeah, 2-1 win. Very, I mean, incredibly lucky in the end. 10 AV breaks to 5, and he's armor 8 and armor 7. But I do have a tree that made some blocks and some fouls. And some of the cars came late. But yeah, you know, the big thing was the riot and just how many ones he rolled on uh, on dodges, basically. Um, very, I mean, some, some of the dodges were 4+, plus, but still, it, it was poor dodges. And yeah, he failed two out of eight GFIs. So actually, he didn't, wasn't that bad on the GFIs. But there you go. Right. Um, so that was that was a great result. Puts me on 5-0 and all at the top of the DBBC qualifier with three spots. Um, it turns out that the, that the Swiss tournament is not programmed correctly. So it should be the top six playing each other, but it's not. Um, the top four play each other. Well, four of the top six play each other. And two of the top six play down to the seventh and eighth places. So if I lose, my touchdown difference is likely to not be good enough. So I'm going to have to draw, win the last game to qualify, probably, almost certainly. And that depends. Some people could draw and stuff. So you know, we'll see what happens. But it's looking, it is looking quite good. Um, but so there you go. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and stay fantastic.